to, to wrap up this module, let's address representation errors and try to bound them in IEEE style number systems like single, double, or some other choice for the number of bits used in the fraction and the exponent. Start by looking at the interval 1 to 2 and a point in that interval. Here I've shown the interval 1, 2 with all the representable numbers as the dark lines. I've written them as separated by 2 to the negative 52, so here it's for double. But that separation could be something else. For single, it's 2 to the negative 23rd, for instance. Up above, I've expanded the scale. The black lines are two neighboring representable numbers, and x is a real number in the interval. Since it's in the interval, x is either a representable number or it's in between two representable numbers. Here I've drawn it in between at just some general location. We'd like to get a bound on the representation error, and by that I mean the distance between x and the nearest representable number. In terms of the picture, the nearest representable number is that vertical bar. Remember that the distance between representable numbers is 2 to the negative 52. That's across the top. So the distance halfway across the gap is 2 to the negative 53. Well, it's clear that since x is between two representable numbers, at most it is 2 to the negative 53 away from a representable number. Therefore, the representation error must satisfy this bound. In general, the 2 to the negative 53 is really just 1 half of apps at 1 because 2 to the negative 52 for doubles is precisely apps at 1. It's the separation in this 1 to 2 interval. And we've just argued that the error must be less than or equal to half that separation. That's a bound on the absolute difference. Sometimes relative differences are also useful. Relative differences are obtained by taking an absolute difference and dividing by one of the quantities of interest. We'll normalize this difference by x. Dividing both sides by x and using the fact that x is greater than or equal to 1 gives this. Notice I divided by x on the left and I divided by 1 on the right. Since 1 is smaller than x, that preserves the inequality. Therefore, 1 half x1, or 2 to the negative 53rd, is a bound on the relative representation here. The difference between x and its nearest representable number normalized by the size of x. What's interesting is though, although we derived this bound for the interval 1 to 2, it's actually valid for the entire range of normalized numbers. Why? Remember that the gaps between representable numbers shrink and grow proportionally with the numbers. The gap is 2 to the negative 52 in the interval 1 to 2 as shown here, but it's 2 to the negative 51 in the interval 2 to 4, 2 to the negative 50 in the interval 4 to 8, and so on. So the relative measure remains the same for all intervals. The distance between a real number and its closest representable number, normalized by the real number, is always less than or equal to 1 half eps 1. Let's use that bound on representation errors to write bounds on the errors made in calculations. Remember that arithmetic on pairs of representable numbers can give results that aren't representable. But the standard is that the stored result of any one of these operations should always be the nearest representable number. Hence, plus or minus on two representable numbers x and y should always give close to the exact answer. In fact, the exact answer with a relative error that is no more than 2 to the negative 53. That's what I'm expressing here, is that the mathematical operation ends up equaling the exact answer times 1 plus delta, where delta is some number less than or equal to 2 to the negative 53. Same thing for multiplication, same thing for divide. Now in all these cases, the 2 to the negative 53 is really 1 half eps 1 if you are using some sort of different IEEE-like number system. The value of delta, of course, depends on x and y. The error made in each instance is different, but the bound always holds. The computed result for any one operation is always within, in a relative sense, 2 to the negative 53 of the exact answer. The same standard actually applies to other math functions. For instance, square root is supposed to have the same type of relative accuracy. Let's do an error analysis example using these ideas. Suppose a, b, and c are representable numbers, 
let's get a bound on the error in computing the value of the two operation expression a b minus c remember if it's a one operation expression we already know what the answer is let's account for errors made in the calculations first there's a multiply a times b that creates an error and then there's a subtraction of c that creates an error let's go through that in two steps the first operation is that a gets multiplied by b let's call that result t the value of t is the exact value of a times b with a small relative error the next operation is a b minus c so c is subtracted from the quantity t again a small relative error is made in that calculation as well combining these substituting for t yields this result the computed result the computed result involves a small relative error in the product and then another small relative error in the subtraction grouping terms gives that expression delta 1 and delta 2 are unknown but there are bounds on them they're both less than approximately 10 to the minus 16th in the case of double to determine the absolute error let's take the computed result d and subtract it from the true result a b minus c and then take the absolute value simply substitute in all the quantities now we'll use the triangle inequality in math which says that the absolute value of x plus y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y as well as the simple relationship that the, the absolute value of the product is equal to the product of the absolute values and we'll also express the fact that delta is less than or equal to one half apps one or 10 to the minus 16th for doubles apply the triangle inequality breaking up the sum inside the absolute value into two absolute values added together in the next step I'm going to treat 10 to the minus 32 as insignificant to 10 to the minus 16th therefore this bound is approximately equal to this I've just grouped the two terms together and pulled out the 10 to the negative 16th there's a bound on the absolute error in computing a b minus c let's look at this as a relative error there's the absolute error divide by the actual value a b minus c to get a relative error bound in making the computation the relative error in computing a b minus c is less than or equal to some quantity times 10 to the minus 16th where did the 10 to the minus 16th come from well that's the relative error that's made in any one single calculation and here it's being amplified by this term 1 plus a b over a b minus c what we notice is that this bound on the right may or may not be small sure 10 to the minus 16th is small but what about the term in front certainly if a b is large and a b minus c is small then the bound can become a very large number and the relative error in the calculation may be much larger than relative errors in single calculations which is just the 10 to the minus 16th this type of error analysis using elementary inequalities the triangle inequality on the previous page to bound the computation error in terms of the machine precision epsilon or one-half epsilon is very common in numerical analysis of algorithms